We are the UNSW Faculty of Engineering, where world-changing action starts with fearless thinking. Whether it be flight in the 1920s and 30s or the development of the motor vehicle or space travel or aeronautical travel or the great buildings and bridges that just make everything happen, these are driven by engineers and engineering. Engineering is one of the disciplines that can change the world. Engineers make things that have tangible impact to the environment and to the society. We sometimes think in different ways to other people. And it's that constant change mindset that we have as engineers. It is constantly looking at something over there and saying, God, that, yeah, but what if we did this? As engineers, we have very complex challenges to solve for society. And the only way we can come up with appropriate solutions is if we really do consider all people within our society. Diverse minds, diverse groups, diverse people are what gives us different approaches to problem solving. And I think some of the best solutions that we get come from different perspectives on the problem. Creativity and engineering go hand in hand and the creativity derives in the way we do solutions. Look at this fantastic car right beside me here. This is the work of our students. We have great creativity to do something new was never done before, right through history. You can see that all the way through in engineering. Through our students, when we teach, we actually get them thinking about sustainability throughout all of their courses. So that from the get-go, they're actually considering, how do we do this more sustainably? Finding new renewable sources of energy, renewable sources of material, making use of waste material, and also looking at the impact on the environment of a lot of the processes that we have. So our engineers take the theory and put them into practice. We're able to develop the solutions that we need in order to have a sustainable future. At UNSW Engineering, we don't just talk about it. We actually get students hands-on and doing it. I wake up every morning just proud to see the development of these students, seeing them standing proud, talking about what they're doing with such confidence is just incredible. There is no doubt we have great challenges. Engineers need to be there and will be there at the forefront of solving these challenges. We just need to make sure that we look after the planet and we look after each other. And if we instill that into our students, then I'm very optimistic on the future. a lot more on campus, so it's great to see that you've all turned up. So just to give you a little bit of a, a rundown, um, this is a faculty welcome. I'm going to tell you a little bit in a moment about what, the, what we'll be talking about today. Um, after this, there'll be a morning tea just outside. Uh, then that'll be followed by um, a Yellow Shirts campus tour uh, at 12 o'clock. Um, so you'll, in that case, you'll go off into your different school groups and they'll take you down to the school and show you some of the facilities and so on. And then for one of the schools, electrical engineering and telecommunications, there'll be a welcome. Um, so this time, the, the bigger welcome's in term one for us, so this time we don't have all schools doing welcomes, but um, there will be representatives from all of the schools at the morning tea. So you can try and find some of your um, school representatives, or if you don't know who they are, come up to us and we'll, we'll point them out to you so that you can have a talk to the people in your school. All right, so I'm here with a couple of my colleagues today, um, and each of us will, will just talk a little bit, and then we're going to have a... Q&A session, so we'll all be up here. There'll be a Slido where you can post questions. We've already uh, polled a couple of uh, questions beforehand, um, so we'll be taking those questions. So there's myself, then um, I will, I'll introduce uh, Joanne in a moment. Joanne's one of our student ambassadors, and um, she's part of our challenge program. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the challenge program, as will Joanne. 
Um, following Joanne, we'll have uh, Debbie, who's our Women in Engineering Manager, and then uh, Michelle, who's our Work Integrated Learning Industrial Training Manager. And finally, we've got Mitch from ARC, who hasn't turned up just yet, but we, he said he's going to turn up halfway through. So, all right, there, as I said, there will be a Q&A session at the end. Um, you can submit questions via Slido. You can try and scan that QR code, but you might be a bit far from it. Um, but slido.com and then put the uh, tag hash UNSWNJOWEEK, all one word. All right, let's kick off. So uh, uh, UNSW Engineering is the largest faculty of engineering in Australia, and uh, we produce the best engineering graduates in the country. Now, a couple of years ago, like we were always, I, me and my colleagues, we do, we, somehow this number of graduating between 20 and 25% of Australia's engineers, we would always um, put that number out there. So um, last year, we developed an education strategy. So I said to the dean, look, um, we all say that it's somewhere between 20 and 25%. Has, we better do the math and actually work out whether that number is correct or not. So I went to the Australian government website, did the numbers. It turns out that UNSW Engineering graduates about 15% of Australia's engineering graduates. Uh, but if you look at New South Wales, then it's about 40% of the state's engineers um, graduate. So I'm sure that you've probably seen a lot of this before. We're very highly ranked. We're ranked number one for engineering in all of the major rankings. Um, we're ranked very, very highly internationally for a number of our disciplines. Um, we're also, uh, what the, you know, if you look at the, the, the major GO8 universities, which are the main research and teaching universities, then we're also the most employable. Our graduates are the most employable of those university graduates. There is a large amount of choice. So both in the undergraduate program and in the postgraduate coursework program, there's a large number of potential degrees or specializations. So choice can be a little bit, can be good on the one hand, but it can be a little bit difficult on the other hand because you've got to try and figure out which one to do. So a little bit later, we'll give you some, there's some information about where you can go if you want to get just a little bit more information about which of those choices might be better for you. Um, Michelle is going to pick this up a little bit more, but in the accredited programs, so all of our undergraduate degrees are accredited, um, and it, w our, if you're in the Master of Engineering, it's also an accredited program. There is a mandatory 60 days industrial training requirement, and Michelle's going to tell you a little bit more about what that means and how you go about it. That said, there is, there is a lot of hands-on um, stuff, I would say, in the faculty. Um, most of that video was shot in our, one of our maker spaces. And we currently have three. We're building a, a fourth one at the moment. And those maker spaces are open to all of you as students. There's an induction program that's run in week one, so it'll be run again in next week. You can get inducted into the maker spaces and you can make use of those facilities. Some of your courses will also be using those facilities. Um, we spent a lot of money this year. We'll probably spend over a million dollars in equipment for the maker spaces. Um, the other day, we just signed off on uh, a piece, one piece of equipment, which was over two hundred fifty thousand dollars that we're shipping from um, the U.S. here. Okay, so what's a typical workload, and what's this UNSW three plus term? So UNSW three plus just refers to um, the three term calendar. So you'll see that we have three 10 weeks term, 10 week terms, followed by one week study break, two weeks of exams, three times a year. There is an intensive summer term for five, that's about five weeks long. Um, we don't tend to offer a lot of courses in, in summer, but there are a few that are run and that may be an opportunity to either accelerate your progression or pick up some additional courses. One of the reasons that we don't um, offer a lot of courses in summer is that summer is also a time when a lot of people will go and do their industrial training. Now, your normal full-time load over a year is um, 48 units of credit or eight courses. Courses are typically six units of credit. There are a couple of exceptions, but not too many of them. Now, if you did the math, um, eight divided by three doesn't really work out. So that just means that you could do, you know, three courses in two terms and two courses in the third. You could do three courses in all three terms and try and accelerate your progression. Um, 
more so at the undergraduate space than the postgraduate space, just because of the length of the degrees. Um, that three-term calendar also allows you to perhaps take a term when you might go overseas, either to do the industrial training or have a, a, you know, an exchange experience. Now, um, each six units of credit at UNSW, we say, requires 150 hours of work. So if you did the math um, over your 10-week terms, um, your 18 units of credit corresponds to about 40 hours of work a, a week. So it basically a full load is equivalent to full, full, full uh, like full, working full time, right? So that's, that's the basic idea. All right, for those of you in undergraduate degrees, the undergraduate degrees in the first year are typically structured as follows. So you have five common core courses. So typically, uh, that'll be two maths, one physics. There's an engineering design course, Desin 1000, that introduces you to, to engineering, um, and one computing course. Then you've got one um, specific, specified year one core elective and two year one electives. And that gives you your suite of eight courses in the first year. So that, roughly speaking, is what a typical first year undergraduate engineering experience looks like. Um, now, just a little bit of information about those electives and how you might go about choosing them. Uh, firstly, most specialisations um, have a list of um, core courses that you can select from the year one elective list. And most specialisations also recommend other courses from that year one elective list. Uh, now, you have to be a little bit careful, so some of you may want to think a little bit about, a little bit ahead and think about what you want, might want to do in the future because uh, the third, you know, particularly your third and fourth year courses have prerequisites based on the courses that you do in first and second year. So you may need to think a little bit now about your elective choices if you're wanting to do specific specialisations in, in your third and fourth year. So don't worry, we're here to help you, so you're not on your own in, in sort of helping make those choices. Generally speaking, we just say, look, enrol in the electives that you're interested in, that you're passionate about, because if you're passionate about them, then you typically it's usually um, uh, much, it's much more fun and it's much easier to sort of get through. For the postgraduate students that are here, which is probably most of you, um, again, um, there are over like 40 engineering master's degrees, um, if you look at our master's programs, there's about 40 different uh, choices that you could make in terms of different specialisations. Again, as I said, if you're a little bit unsure about which choice is best for you, then there is a lot of help around to help you make those choices. Um, depending on your background, uh, the postgraduate courses will take you somewhere between a year and two years. So if you have um, prior learning, then you may be able to get what's called recognition of prior learning or advanced standing is another term that's used and that can reduce the length of the, the degree. Um, typically speaking, um, you know, the master's programs are broken down into a graduate certificate, first four courses, then the graduate diploma through to the full master's. Um, again, if you do need some help here, you, there is advice from the schools and as I said, we will have representatives from every school outside after this uh, session. Okay, so where else might you go when it comes to getting some help? Now, I'm gonna start with the right-hand column first. So if the help that you need is for a specific course or subject, then typically you would go to the course convener. So if you have questions about the labs, about the assessment tasks, uh, the exams, marking, the structure of the course and so on, the content of the course, go to the course convener. Some of you may be in tutors and tutorials and labs, so you could ask the tutor or the lab demonstrator to also help you out. Um, for just about all other information, you would go to the Nucleus or the Student Hub. Um, the web page is just there. Uh, they can provide things like confirmation letters of enrolments, information about fees, transcripts, um, information about examinations, taking program leave, special consideration if you fall sick during the term, and uh, so on. So if you're a little bit unsure, don't worry. Reach out to either your course convener or the nucleus, and they'll then point you in the right direction. 
Um, again, uh, I might just say there's two QR codes here that you could scan. Um, there is a campus security. Uh, I would suggest that you put that number in your phone and if at any time you need to use it, 9385-6666, just give that number a call and the security will be there to help you. There are some help points around the campus as well that you can go to, but if you, if you do need any help, campus security is also there to help you out. All right, um, let's go to our poll. Okay, so you can go to the Slido and the question is, what are you looking uh, most forward, uh, sorry, what are you most looking forward to at UNSW? So making friends, climbing the bouldering wall at the New Village Green. I haven't even been to the, the bouldering wall. Uh, pulling all nighters in the library, joining a student club or society, happy hour at the roundhouse, getting your hands dirty at a maker space, becoming one of the most employable graduates in Australia, building a car with SunSwift. Okay, so you've got a minute or two to answer this question. Okay, we're seeing, having a few adjustments. It's looking good. All right, that's good. That's interesting. All right. <laughs> so becoming employable and making friends are the most important too, which is great. And joining a club or society is a great way to make friends, by the way. And there's a lot of clubs and societies, which I'm sure Mitch is going to tell us about at the back. Good on you, Mitch. All right, let's go to the next um, poll question, number two. Um, why did you choose to study engineering? Uh, so STEM, so that's um, science, technology, engineering and math were my favourite best subjects. I want to make the world a better place. I like to problem solve and understand how things work. I want to build new things and flex my creative muscles. Uh, my parents told me to. <laughs> All right, this is really interesting too. All right, everyone wants to solve problems. Excellent, great. All right, good. Um, thanks for being so good at uh, participating in the poll. I'm now going to hand over to Joanne, who is one of our wonderful student ambassadors. So please make Joanne welcome. Hey, everyone. I'm Joanne and I'm a fourth year student here at UNSW studying mechanical and biomedical engineering. And one thing that I've made a point of in my first few years of uni and will continue to be a goal of mine until I literally graduate is to get involved in as many extracurricular activities as I can just because as a student the flexibility you have to do this is actually crazy. Um, so the types of extracurricular activities I like to pursue are both related to engineering and some that have nothing to do with engineering. But for engineering in particular, um, I've been really lucky to be involved in quite a few things and I really want to share these with you, the different facilities you can get involved in. Murray mentioned makerspaces and I'll talk to you a little bit more about that. And also the challenge program which was mentioned a few times. I'll also give you everything you need to know about that just so uh, as soon as uni kicks off officially next week, you're good to go and have everything you need to really have as much fun as you can while completing your coursework. So just first of all, with the makerspaces, this is pretty much the playground for engineering students. It's where you go and literally just go and get your hands dirty. It's available for you if you want to complete or work on projects as part of your coursework. If you have any extracurricular projects you're part of, you also can get access to the makerspaces for that. Even if you have a personal hobby or a personal project you're involved in, you can go to the makerspace and work on your stuff there. It's available to all UNSW students. It's free and the process to get inducted is not tedious at all. It's really simple. You do your induction and then basically get trained on whatever equipment you want to use. So it's easily accessible and we have three for the Faculty of Engineering. So it is there for the students and for you to really take advantage of it. And there are lots of cool machines where you're not going to be able to get some in your at home, for example. You're not going to be able to get a CNC machine at home. You're not going to be able to get a laser cutter at home. We have 3D printers as well. There's every hand tool you might need for all your engineering project requirements. And it's all in a very handy place for you. 
So definitely do check it out and as soon as you can, the bookings fill out so quickly, so get in as quickly um, as you can. And then point two that I want to talk to you about is the challenge program. And I've been in the challenge program for just over two years now, so I can confidently tell you, uh, first of all, it's a great way for you to make friends, first of all, to connect with other engineering students, especially those studying in disciplines uh, one that you're not studying in. Um, in so through the challenge program as well, you can also meet non-engineering students um, because some of these projects are cross-disciplinary, so you can uh, link with students from science or medicine, so you can really get in touch with students from all around university that you wouldn't naturally, you won't naturally be able to if you were just uh, relying on your courses, for example, to make these new friends. With the challenge program, you also have the opportunity to be linked with researchers and professors and really start building those relationships with um, staff members that, again, just through your coursework is really difficult for you to be able to do this and so um, increases your networking opportunities by like a million percent. Um, another quick thing about the challenge program is the skills you get out of it. So I believe that there are some, or mostly non-technical skills, but also some technical skills that are super critical in to making you an all-around engineer that you just can't learn in class. You just can't pick up on them through your normal lectures and tutorials and workshops. You have to, uh, to be able to develop these skills, you have to be involved in projects, and these are just things that you will naturally develop through exposure and just by being hands-on. And so this is another opportunity for you to get that hands-on experience. And like a personal experience um, of mine is that over, or late last year I sat an inter interview for an internship over the summer and the bulk of my interview was just discussing some projects I worked on as part of Challenge and the skills I got out of that. So very tangible and it makes a good talking point um, for you to start building up your engineering portfolio and before you've graduated you can already say I've done ABC um, projects and this is what I got out of that. Now the Challenge program, all the projects in this program have been like categorised into four pillars. And the first and largest pillar is VIP. These are vertically integrated projects. So what this means is every project will run over three terms. And at the end of your third term, or each term is allocated two units of credit. So over three terms, that's six units of credit, or essentially um, an elective course if you have space for that in your degree program. So tick, you're getting course credit for being involved in a VIP project. Secondly, because this is the largest pillar, there are so many projects on offer that cover all the disciplines of engineering. So whatever your niche is, whatever your interest is in engineering, there will most likely, or like 99%, be a project offered under VIP that aligns with your interests. So it does cater, cater to uh, the variety of engineering uh, majors and disciplines and fields that exist. Um, an example of a project I worked on under VIP is called Mending Broken Hearts. And this one, so the, main, the goal of the project is to create a turtle artificial heart, which even now when I say it, as a student, having the opportunity to work on a project, that is so impactful. And you wouldn't think that you'd be able to work on this as a student. You'd think you have to be quite a few years into your career to be able to work on such projects. But that's not the case at all. With other students, with your supervisors, with research um, assistants, um, you really get a head start on your engineering career basically through these projects. The second pillar in Challenge is the Assistive Tech Hub. This is a really unique, uh, the projects offered under Assistive Tech Hub are really unique in the sense that you are co-designing and prototyping an, an assistive technology directly with a client that has a disability. And so by making a product uh, catered to them, you're able to help them improve their lifestyle. And an example we have here, this is uh, a project that was worked on in collaboration with the Balmain Rowing Club. And so the project they worked on helped um, this client proceed into the Paralympics, which was all, the project was all student-based, but this was an example of uh, how impactful that was able to be. The third pillar in the challenge program are student projects. And uh, just um, on Assistive Tech Hub, another tick out of this is that you also get course credit. So um, it, is, it does run over two terms. So each term is allocated three units of credit, and then um, at the end of that, you get six units of credit or an elective. The third pillar is are the student projects, and the name is a little bit self-explanatory, where these are completely student-run. Um, the, the team pictured here is the rocketry team, and they are actually over in the States right now competing, which is really exciting. Um, and we have another student project, uh, Drought Resistance Uganda, where the team is actually right now in Uganda as well, uh, 
their, their focus is more on drought resistant agriculture. So with these projects, you also have the opportunity to get international exposure and um, go overseas and really interact with engineers and communities overseas and not, you're not just limited to the local um, engineering space. And the final pillar in the challenge program is the humanitarian engineering minor. So how the minor works is you do, you have a few subjects you have to complete, uh, similar to how your subjects are set out for your normal degree program. You have your core courses and then you have an elective. And you complete those series of courses and when you graduate alongside the degree program you're completing, you also get certified by having completed a minor in engineering and uh, humanitarian engineering. And again, as the name suggests, this is all about humanitarian activities ranging anywhere from disaster response to sustainable, to sustainable community development. And those are the four pillars of Challenge Program. As you might have been able to see, it covers a wide variety of interests and there are different things you can get out of them. You can get course credit, you can just get experience, um, networking with other students, the chance to go overseas. So there is quite a bit you can get out of it. And for postgraduate students, you can start as early as your first year. For undergrad students, most of these are only available from your second year. But it's still worth sussing them out and just seeing uh, what you're really keen to get on, uh, get on board with. And so I do highly recommend getting involved. Um, most of my experiences in engineering have been through the challenge program and I've had heaps of fun um, alongside obviously learning some really invaluable skills that I wouldn't have been able to learn otherwise. And so, yeah, I, please check it out and good luck with when uni officially kicks off next week. And I'd like to pass on to Debbie now who, I was, who is our Women in Engineering Manager. Thank you so much, Joanne, and good morning, everyone. Um, it's so nice to see so many people here joining us today, and I'd also like to extend a big welcome to those of you commencing your studies who couldn't actually be here in person who are joining us online this morning, so this is also being live streamed. Uh, so my name is Debbie Vidaz, and I manage the, um, the Women in Engineering program here at UNSW. So diversity and inclusion are really highly valued here at UNSW, and we're really proud to have one of the largest women in engineering communities within Australia. Now, diversity in perspective is something that's really important, and not just in your studies here, but there's also a growing body of evidence to show that in the workplace, having diversity in leadership and also having women in key leadership roles not only increases the value of a company, but it also increases the productivity. So all of you here are studying engineering and in a field as diverse as engineering, it's really important to embrace diversity. So people from different backgrounds and opinions and life experiences to yours, I really encourage you to invite uh, different people into your group projects, into classroom discussions, into research groups, so that you can really enrich your university experience by embracing that diversity in perspective. So with regards to the Women in Engineering program, uh, this program was established in 2014 and it's really about building and supporting the community of women studying engineering here at UNSW. So we have a range of regular events that we run every term. Um, I'd like to actually invite all of you, everybody in the room, uh, to come to our first coffee check-in chat event that we're running in week three. And that's held at Coffee on Campus, and we run three of them a term. We've also got them running in week seven and week nine. And the purpose behind this event is to enable students to connect with one another. Um, also provides opportunities to connect to some staff, um, and it's really a good way to start building those networks right from when you start your studies here, because those networks you build um, as students are actually going to um, support you once you head into the workforce as well. So we run three of those events, even though our events are targeting um, women studying engineering, they're open to everybody, so everybody can come and join those. Um, in week four, we are also having our first Friday Flix event. Uh, so this is a collaboration between faculty and our partner student societies, and we'll be screening a movie, and it's to celebrate International Women in Engineering Day on the 23rd of June. 
So I know you're going to be hearing a lot uh, this week as well, and you might not remember those dates, but I encourage you to take a look at our Women in Engineering website, and we have a page for current students, and it lists all the upcoming events that we do have on. So uh, come and meet the community, and I really encourage you to get involved. Uh, we also have a LinkedIn group for our Women in Engineering community, and that helps to connect you to industry and alumni as well. So we put a lot of posts up there about opportunities. Uh, we also post um, if um, a company is, has got internships on offer too or graduate opportunities. So join our LinkedIn group. Um, and there's also a number of development opportunities that you can participate in through the Women in Engineering um, program. So there's peer mentoring opportunities, industry mentoring, a lot of them are run by our partner student societies as well. And if you do have an interest in entrepreneurships and startups, I really encourage you to check out the Founders New Wave program. So speaking about student societies, um, one of the benefits you'll find by commencing your studies here at UNSW is that we have over 300 different clubs and societies. So around 30 of them are affiliated with um, the Faculty of Engineering. And within Women in Engineering, we have four key partner student societies. So we have the Women in Engineering Society, that's WESOC. Uh, we also have Women in Technology, WIT. We have RoboGals UNSW, and we also have Tweet, which is affiliated with the School of Electrical Engineering and Telecommunications. So through the societies, not only is it a great way to network and attend their social events and meet other people, but they do host a lot of those mentoring opportunities that I did speak about, um, including industry mentoring programs, um, industry nights as well. So it's a really great way to get involved and to take advantage of those opportunities that, that exist outside of your academic studies. Uh, with regards to support as well, um, I, my role is dedicated to supporting the experience of our women in engineering students. So if ever you find you need a little bit of guidance or some extra support, please feel free to email me and I can help point you in the right direction. Um, we do have linked to our Women in Engineering page, a list of the different student support services. Um, Murray did outline as well um, where you can access the support via the Nucleus. Um, also, there is a Stay Safe at UNSW app that I do encourage you to download as well. That can be very useful. Um, but we want to let you know that we are here to help help you when you need it to, but also to provide those opportunities to really get you to make the most out of your time here at UNSW. Uh, so I look forward to seeing you at an upcoming event. Remember, coffee check-in chat in week three. Um, and I'll be around afterwards at the social functions as well if you want to um, come up and say hello. So welcome once again, and I hope you have an incredible time here at UNSW. I would now like to hand over to my colleague, Michelle Hannon, who's going to talk to you about work integrated learning. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. I know it's a lot of information to take in, right? Uh, my name is Michelle Hannon, and I'm here to talk to you about industrial training. Now, those of you that are on an accredited degree, um, either a Master's of Engineering or a Bachelor um, um, degree in Engineering with Honours, you'll have industrial training as a program requirement. Um, and that's an exciting journey for you. Let me just, um, oh, sorry, wrong way. There we go. So engineering industrial training is 60 days. So as part of your program, you need to undertake 60 days out in industry. Now, don't worry, it's all, you're going to get all the support you need all the way through. Um, you do have to self-source your own placement, and that's really going to help you gain those employability skills that you said that you wanted at the beginning of this presentation. So to become um, a, a graduate that's employable, you need to have employability skills along the way, as well as those engineering um, um, ac academic contexts that you're going to have all the way through your degree. So you're going to be here, you're going to be un uh, learning under some fantastic academics, you're going to be learning some great skills, you're going to be undertaking some fantastic projects as we've already outlined, and you're going to have some great support along the way. But it's important too that you do learn those employability skills that get you there, and that you trial your future degree, your future career out whilst you're here at university, and that you have the support to do it. And we'll give you that support. 
So industrial training really is for 60 days for you to undertake something that you are expecting to do in your future career that's relevant to your program. Now we also have to know that you're being supervised correctly um, and that you're undertaking something that is relevant to what you're doing here at the university. So we do need to know where you're going, when you're doing it, what you're doing and who you're doing it with. Um, and that's where we connect with you at the university here. Oh, I'm going in the wrong way all the time, sorry. Now, um, those of you that are undertaking a bachelor's degree, all of you will be enrolled into ENG4999 at the end, by the end of this term, so you'll see that as a course code come up on your course requirements. Now, it doesn't mean you have to start your industrial training now. You have right, and, right all the way through to year two or three to start your placement. Um, and you will have time to really think about what you want to do and get some engineering context under your belt before you start. By the end of year three, we really expect you to have your placement and start working and get your actual, your um, final report in into us so that we can get you assessed and get a satisfactory mark put, put on your transcript. So it's a really great opportunity now to start thinking about you, you're not going to know where you, where you want to go and what you want to do. Some of you already do, which is fantastic. But really get involved with those projects that we talked about. Start really talking to your student societies. Get involved with other students. Learn about what they're doing and how they're coping with, with their degree and what they're really finding interesting. So it kind of puts some light bulbs on for you. And it, you can start to see where you want to go and what you want to do with your career for the future. Um, and industrial training really is that, is that journey all the way through for you. So my, myself and, our t and my team will be looking out for you all the way through. You'll be engaging with us all the way through that journey. Um, and we also have UNSW employability here that will help you through that as well. They're the ones that you can connect with. So that's for the undergraduate. For the postgraduate, those that are doing a master's, you only have two years to do your industrial training. So we really hope that you can start your journey by the end of year one. Um, and really start getting into your work by the beginning of year two and have your final report into us by the end of year three. So it is a self-sourced. Now, I don't know whether you remember at the beginning, Maurice showed you those accolades of what UNSW is. Um, we are the most employable university and companies do really want to engage with you. You know, you've worked really, really hard to get here and we hope to take you along a, a great journey. And our, um, the industry, the engineering industry out there know that. So they do want to engage with you. In fact, we held a, a workshop yesterday where we had uh, four employers come in to talk about how they recruit students because they do want to recruit UNSW students. So just being here is a tick, first of all, for you. So well done. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulate yourselves for that. Um, but, but also the employers do want to connect with you. So they do that through our jobs boards, they come to seminars, they come to our workshops. So you will get lots of chance to integrate and to meet employers, as well as um, other, other people in the industry that might you know, provide you some opportunity out there. So I'd like to say congratulations to you because you're on a great journey and being employable will be a natural progression for you. And when you graduate in four years' time, you will be able to get those jobs out there. Um, so please, what I'd like you to, to all do, if those of you that do have industrial training as a program requirement, please look at the um, scan up there. There's a, a code there and that will get you straight through to our student intranet. That will take you through stage by stage your industrial training. We do hold workshops every single term that you can find there. And I would really encourage you to come along to that because we run three workshops. One where employers come and talk to you about their recruitment process. The second is about all of what you have to do for industrial training. And the third workshop is about how you can get yourself out there, write your resume, get a LinkedIn profile going, uh, connect and find a network. So welcome everybody. Uh, we really do look forward to, work, to, to working with you. I'd now like to introduce you to uh, Mitch McBurney from ARC, who's a Director of Marketing and Student Experience, who's gonna talk to you about the student societies and what fantastic things they have to offer you. So thank you. Thank you.
Thanks so much, Michelle, and lovely to meet all of you. My name is Mitch, and I work for you. I work for the student organization at UNSW. We're called ARC. It doesn't stand for anything. It just arcs over a whole bunch of different stuff that we do at university to make your time the best it can possibly be. We have a mission at ARC, and our mission is to create the best student experience. Now, that's a high promise, and it's important that I emphasize that to you because each of you is different. Each of you has different passions, curiosities, interests, fears, uh, hobbies, backgrounds, and you smoosh all of those wonderful things together to have a unique student experience. And whoever you are and wherever you come from, we want you to have an amazing time at uni. And we do that through our little saying, find your thing, because we know that every student is different. They're looking for something else along the way. You've got this bit of time while you're doing your undergrad or postgrad to learn, to breathe, to take things in, to try new things, to get outside of your comfort zone. And in the spirit of getting outside your comfort zone, I would like you to turn to the person next to you and I would like you to find out their name and one hobby that they do. Ready, set, go. All right, I'm going to interrupt you there. I'm sorry to cut your conversation short. Now, in order to positively reinforce going outside of your comfort zone, I have some rewards. So if you can put your hand up and tell me the name and the hobby of the person next to you, I'm happy to give you exclusive ARC Find Your Thing socks. Yes, first nominee. Nice, films and movies, there you go. <gasps> oh, good catch. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much for being part of that activity. I wanna tell you about 300 other ways that you can make friends while you're at UNSW. We have over 300 different clubs and societies at this university, everything you can possibly imagine. We are the kind of huge, diverse student organization that we can support, a Chinese Students Association, a music society, and even a Chinese Students Music Society. Like, we do everything at this university. There are some amazing clubs related to your engineering studies. That could be NSOC at your faculty level, you could look down to your school level, um, there's some program related and work integrated learning um, programs that you can be a part of as well. But alongside of that, you can join in the film society, you can join in the cricket club as well, there's heaps of ways that you can get involved. And if we don't have what you're looking for, we're always encouraging people to start a new society. I believe at the moment there's a couple of people looking to start a hummus appreciation society. So, if that's your thing, you can do that. The next thing that I want to tell you about is sport. Now, we know that a healthy body supports a healthy mind, and you guys are the creme de la creme when it comes to healthy mind, so I'm sure you're interested in physical activity as well. It doesn't matter what your level of sporting ability is, but you've got to get moving. You can play social sport, you could join one of our incredible sports clubs, and if you're more competitive, you could get involved at the nationals level by being part of Team UNSW as well. And then we have an expression, get involved. We like to say to students, find a way that you can get involved at university. You could get involved in a sustainability program, you could volunteer on campus, you could volunteer off campus, and you can come for whatever reason and stay for whatever reason. A lot of people join in the programs because they want to get professional development and they need that very first foot in the door to organize a project, to work with stakeholders, to do some communication, to do some planning, but then they end up staying around because they like the warm and fuzzies of helping other people and they like the warm and fuzzies of getting to know others along the way. And something that we do at ARC that's very important to us is wellness. And to us, wellness is uh, making sure that you are in the best possible position to look after yourself and by extension, look after others. And we know that wellness is a skill that's developed over time. You don't just wake up one morning and you're amazing at wellness. It's something that you build up with a bunch of tools that you can develop while you're doing your studies. So we put on lots of events and have resources to remind you to look after yourself and then by extension, look after others. We have this saying which, which we like to say, which is you can't pour from an empty cup. 
which is to say, you need to look after yourself and have your wellness kind of sorted out before you're able to step in and help others. But if that's something that you're interested in, please check out all of our resources online as well. Which brings me to a very important point, which is help. And I think all of the speakers before me and the ones that will be on the panel will remind you that this university is extremely passionate about making sure that you don't just survive at university, but you absolutely thrive. The big change though, from where you may have been previously, where people will knock on your door and check in on you quite frequently, is that you do have to ask for help. You have to come speak to us if you need um, a hand with, it, with anything. And often it's important to do that sooner rather than later. And for 90% of students, everything goes to plan. You don't need to worry about getting help. But for 10% of you or your friends, someone in your class, things might not necessarily go to plan. So you need to access lots of services that are available there to help you. At ARC, we have Food Hub, which is giving out free groceries every week. We have the largest food hub at any university in Australia and give out over a thousand food hampers, which would be about 4,000 meals a week. It's a huge number and it highlights that getting groceries in Sydney is expensive. We know that. So if you are struggling with your nutrition, absolutely head down there. There is no need to be ashamed. There's plenty of other people doing it. I have gotten a few um, iceberg lettuces myself. Um, the next thing that we do is ARC Legal and Advocacy, which is a, um, two lawyers who work for ARC and their job is to support current students. So you can come and speak to them about anything in your life. It doesn't have to be university related. They help students with tenancy. They help students with employment. They help students with visa and migration. Go talk to them and they will help you out to the best of their abilities. We also have the Student Representative Council and the Postgraduate Representative Council. They put on social events, but they also support students from lots of different backgrounds. And this week and next week, we have a very new program called Campus Compass, which is where you can come meet us at the big yellow signs on the main walkway, and we can just talk to you about getting settled in, whether that is making, setting up your multi-factor authentication, which is, has been a nightmare for me, but we're fine now, um, whether that is getting your enrollment sorted, finding out where all your classes are, come visit us and we will help you out as much as we can. And the last thing that I'm going to mention is this very Australian expression, which is heaps more. And in Australia, heaps more means all the other stuff that we can do. So we can take you on trips and tours around Sydney and New South Wales. We give out free stationery to students. You can get your bike fixed up with us and we have room hire as well. So the last step, if you haven't joined up to ARC already, this is not a lecture where you can get in trouble for having your phone out. You can get your phone out scan that QR code, fill out the form, come visit us on campus. There's plenty more free socks. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure you have an amazing time while you're at university. Thank you so much for listening to me and have a wonderful day. Thank you. All right. We are now at the Q&A session. I have my wonderful colleagues joining me. So you, you can scan the QR code or you can go to slido.com and uh, the, the tag is hash UNSW NJO week. Um, so again, we have Joanne, Debbie, Michelle, and also joining us is John. John is the manager of student opportunities and experience in the uh, faculty and uh, education team. All right. Let's go. Do we get paid in industrial placement? So Michelle, I'll pass that one to you. So most of our students get paid for their industrial training. However, you may want to take up opportunities that aren't paid. For example, we have um, courses here at the university that you can take that count towards your industrial training. Or you might find a fantastic opportunity out there and the company may not be able to pay you. So of course you can do unpaid if you wish to, but most of our students get paid for their industrial training. All right, thanks, Michelle. Um, what skills differentiate a good engineer from a great one? I'm going to give my two cents and then I might hand it over to my colleagues here. But I think there's a broad range of skills that you need. First is that those technical skills, you need to be able to sort of do the job, right? But then also it's very important to be able to work with others. It's very important to be able to communicate uh, the work that you've done. Um, so again, critical thinking is, uh, is obviously a really important skill for engineers, but um, yeah, I might pass it over to see if anyone else wants to chip in. 
Um, I'm happy to add to that. Um, because with any kind of design that you're doing too, there's always a client at the other side of it. So having good communication skills, but also really determining, you know, what is it that the user of your product is wanting or the outcome as well. So it's really important to have that understanding of either the client or the community um, that are going to benefit uh, from your design with engineering. I can also add that employers look for, um, when, when you actually graduate, they're going to ask you, what things did you get involved with at university? What projects did you do? What did you start and finish? And if you say, I'm great at teamwork, then you have to articulate what you did for teamwork. You know, what role did you play? Um, how did you contribute to that team? So that's what the employers are going to be looking for. And in engineering, that's quite critical, as well as the communication, the teamwork, the projects that, that you undertake and how you actually did them. I'll just throw my 10 cents in quickly. <laughs> also, really get to know each other. Get to understand each other's skill sets and where you all come from, your backgrounds. We try to promote a really inclusive environment at UNSW. And moving forward into your workplaces, you're all going to you know, approach projects in different ways, so understanding how you each other work, what your strengths are and the perspectives you're coming from will help you understand and drive projects in a much more interesting way and in a way that's going to be much more supportive of each other. So really get to know what your strengths are and each other's strengths. All right, so that's great. I, um, I'm actually going to pick up the third one here because it was at the top a moment ago and I was trying to figure out what the answer was to this one. I might get Joanne to start it, but UNSW is a wonderful university. Can you give us recommendations for places we should visit while on campus? My two favorite things. First, food. Um, we have quite a few food courts on campus, but my favorite, if you haven't been to it so far, is the one on lower campus near IGA. Uh, we have two restaurants, Delini's and Yellow Eats. My favorite place, sometimes if I'm there, I'll get um, something for breakfast. I'll have like a chicken bowl for breakfast. Uh, that's how excited I get for that. Secondly, uh, in the library, we have some sleeping pods um, where literally you go in and you take a nap. Uh, sometimes <laughs> uni gets rough and you just need a quick um, pick-me-up, so that's a nice place to go where you can safely sleep. <laughs> All right, thank you, Shane. Debbie? Um, I've got two to add as well. So there's the Village Green. Um, definitely check that out, especially if you want to get a bit active as well. There's a bouldering wall, there's courts there, so you can do lots of different sports. Um, but also check out the library lawn. So I think it's Wednesdays that they have some free live music each week. Um, so there's lots of different events going on up there as well. All right, perfect. So going back to the questions, what opportunities are there for practical hands-on projects for first-year students? A challenge and student projects only available for second year students. So I can quickly pick this up and then I'll hand it to John. Challenges does start from second year. In first year, uh, I guess here we're talking undergraduate students. In first year there is the Odesin 1000 which is the design course. It's a project based course but the maker spaces are also open to you to do extracurricular stuff. John. Yeah, exactly that. I mean, most of the challenge stuff is starting from second year onwards, just because we need you to develop your engineering skills through first year to be able to really apply yourself in those projects. But it's really you know, good for you to start planning what aspects of challenge and what projects you want to do from this point forward. You know, there are you know, limitations in your study plans of how much stuff you, know, you can fit in through your electives, through your degree, and through all these extra opportunities that you get to participate in. So take the time now in first year to involve yourself fully in your degree, but also start thinking about what opportunities you want to take part in in the future and how that might fit into your degree structure. And we can help you with that. And then from second year onwards, you can take full advantage of everything that we have available. Yeah, and just to add on to that, um, some student projects actually exist as societies. So with that, you can get involved in your first year, even if it might not be in the technical side of the project. You can just be involved um, in the subcommittee, for example, just get to know everyone and take on um, more of the non-technical um, roles before you progress into once you have your engineering context, you can start working on the projects themselves. Brilliant. What are some key tips for time management? What is some advice that previous engineering students have given over the years? Now, I, I, I think, my, in my experience, I think this is a little bit personal in that what works for you might not work for someone else. I often tell my students that one thing that you'll learn while you're at university is time management 
and how bad you are at it. <laughs> I still don't think I've perfected that time management skill. Um, I don't know, maybe if anyone, does anyone have any sort of specific uh, suggestions? I just more so for undergraduate students, so um, assuming before this you have just uh, finished school only or you've taken a little bit of gap and now you've come back to resume your studies. Um, a big jump um, from moving from school to university is uh, the flexibility you have. So uh, at school you have class five days a week, Monday to Friday, nine to three for example. But at university, if you've already put together your timetables, you know that you have so much more flexibility. You might not have classes every day. You might not have classes back to back. You might have just some in the morning and some in the afternoon. And that can be really exciting to know that you have so much free time, but that can also very quickly turn into something really bad. And something that it took me a while to get a hold of as well, and most other students when they start university for the first time, just knowing that just stay on top of it as early as you can because it can really easy fall into, you can fall into the habit of, oh, you know, I'll do it tomorrow morning or I'll do it later, and later just never comes. And so just uh, from your first week, starting from next week, get into the habit of every day doing its tasks. Um, I know it's easier said than done, but try by the end of the day to have your work finished because the next day brings its own to-do list. Um, what works for me, and back when I was a student as well, is using a calendar tool. So if you have access to Outlook Calendar or Google Calendar and just chunking out what you need to do and you can colour code it as well, so if it's related to a particular subject, but that really helps um, keep you on track, or it does for me. And can I just add that if you are falling behind in your studies or you feel stressed or you're not kind of coping very well, there's plenty of support here at UNSW. You can go and um, Google UNSW support and they can actually work through your timetable with you and look at gaps and where, where they can help and support you through that. So don't feel that you're struggling on your own. Go and seek support early to make sure that you can get a plan in place. Yeah, I often tell the students, particularly when it comes to projects, uh, where you know the deliverables may be further down the track. Make sure you, there's no week in which you spend zero hours on that course. Um, yes, there'll be some weeks where you do more, there'll be some weeks where you do less, but don't uh, try and avoid not doing anything on any of the courses that you have. All right, um, how do I join my course-related clubs? I don't think there are course, are there course-related clubs? Maybe more like Engineering School. Society, yeah. MECSOC. Um, so it's a very informal process. Uh, right now we are in O-Week, so some of them might have stores you might have seen around campus. So you just walk up, let them know that you want to join the club, and you know it's just a really simple registration form you fill out. Otherwise, if you miss that, um, if you keep up to date on their socials, most uh, clubs and societies have either a Facebook page or an Instagram, Instagram page where they put all the uh, upcoming events. You literally just show up to the event and get to know everyone there and then they can also pass you along to the official registration to join the club. But it's very informal and it's just a matter of just show up. All right, brilliant. Um, are you allowed to overload your units to finish the course earlier? You, you can overload, you've got to have a, a particular sort of weighted average mark, but you, you can overload. But I would get you to seriously think about it just because you are putting yourself under more pressure and the courses do tend to be quite intensive, particularly in that 10 week term. Um, what are the best ways to make friends on campus? I don't want to study in the library by myself. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a great idea. Good question. I think there's a lot of ways, right? So, I mean, in undergrad, I think it's a little bit easier because you're often in tutorial classes or lab classes and often you're partnered up with someone or there's someone sitting next to you and you make friends that way. Um, clubs and societies, I'm sure there's a million other suggestions. Just uh, on the topic of clubs and societies, that is, in my opinion, the number one way to make friends. But also, we have our societies that are faculty related and you know related to your area of study. But then there are also societies just based on hobbies and interests. So if you go to a society uh, based on a hobby you have, then you already know that you have one thing in common with everyone there. So that's a great way for you to make friends and already have a talking point to start off. Also, you can make friends in the library. <laughs> Sometimes if late night study sessions, you're in the same boat as someone else, um, you can also just turn to them and have a chat. Can I just add, sorry, for, for the women in engineering community as well, that's why we run events like Coffee Check-In Chat and we have our Friday Flicks. And as mentioned too, they're open to everybody as well. So if you really do want to make friends, come along and we will introduce you to people. Just a tip, the, I'm a computer scientist. Um, 
The CSC Society has a weekly barbecue in the lawn uh, just next to the Barker Street car park. Um, I don't think they check whether you're from CSC or not, uh, but it's a very popular barbecue. Every Wednesday at midday, go down there. And there are a lot of the other clubs and societies, and there are some that are somewhat affiliated with the schools, they will do similar things. Um, all right, does helping a friend on an assignment come under the act of plagiarism? And that's a great question. So often in the first lecture, plagiarism is usually covered. It'll vary a little bit from course to course in the following sense. So in some courses, you'll actually be doing group work, right? So you, there you really have to work together. Um, often, um, as again, I'm a computer scientist, so what, the way I would often explain it to a student when it's an individual assignment is I would say, look, I encourage you to talk to your classmates about this assignment, but when your fingers hit the keyboard, then it's your work. And, you know, it's usually rules of thumb like that that... Um, that uh, are, are the way to, to deal with it. Again, ask, um, uh, you might want to ask your course convener and so on for a little bit of guidance, particularly if you're unsure as to how much you can help someone or how much help you can receive. All right. Is there any, any industrial training programs for PhD students? Um, there, there isn't as such, not, not in terms of our industrial training program, but uh, there is an Australian initiative um, called APR Intern. It's run by AMSI, which is the Australian Mathematical Sciences Institute, and they do have these short internships. But if you are a PhD student, I would suggest that you talk about this with your supervisor because um, Taking time off from your PhD may also affect progression in your PhD. PhDs tend to be fairly, you know, you're taking a very deep dive into a subject. Taking time off can distract you. So you, you might want to think about, do I really want to do it? What's the best time to do it during the PhD program and, and so on? Um, if my course does not have industrial training program, are you allowed to sign up for any or be involved in them. I'll get Michelle to take this one in a moment, but a lot of our students will, will, will have jobs related to their areas of studies, regardless of whether they use it for industrial training or not. So the short answer here would be yes. Um, so if your course doesn't include industrial training, is that the, uh, is that the question? If, yeah, if the program, I guess, doesn't. So we do have a will elective, industrial training, work integrated learning. So you'll hear the word work integrated learning around the university, and industrial training is part of that. So yes, there is an elective that you can do if you don't have industrial training as your program requirement, um, and you can go out and do some placement, and it's counted for course, course credit. Um, what are the major research projects being undertaken by UNSW Engineering? Uh, we've only got three minutes left. Um, there are a huge number of research projects going on at any given time. Um, I think the number that I heard the other day was up to this point, we've conducted about $30 million worth of research just in, in this year. Um, that, 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 that'll be huge by the time we get to the end of the year. There, there are a huge number of research projects going on. So often what I say to students during a welcome is, along with your studies, clubs and societies, take a bit of time to go and look at some of the labs and, and things that are going around. Open day, even though you're at university and open day is perhaps more aimed at people wanting to come to university, open day, the first Saturday in September, is a great time to be on campus and go and see some of the amazing labs and so on, quantum computers, um, could be just, yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. Well, if you want to talk to your academics as well, they, they often are involved with research, so find out from them, you know, talk, talk within your school, because there's lots of research going on within the individual schools. And if you actively want to get involved with research, you can through the vertically integrated projects through Challenge. That's actually working directly with research on active research projects. And so you can help drive that research early in your undergraduate career, moving through to postgraduate. All right. Well, maybe we'll just cover this one. Where do we get, where do we go to get our student ID? Where do we go? For that that is um, at the Nucleus, uh, right next to the library. Right. Perfect. That's not where I get my staff card. So we've done the next two, if the student if students worked in industry before, do they still need to complete industrial training? Well, if you're in an accredited program. So I think in the Master of Engineering, you'll still need to do it, right? Yes, yeah, so you can get recognition of prior experience if you've done some work prior within the last two years, it's relevant to your program. 
but we still require you to do the assessment items. Okay. Um, but yes, we can. Yeah, thanks, Michelle. I might just take these two and then we'll finish up. Um, are there any programs that support aspiring entrepreneurs? Absolutely. There are some courses. Um, a number, there are a number of courses that we do in engineering. There's also the Founders Program, which is run within the Michael Crouch Innovation Centre. So you might look up the Michael Crouch Innovation Centre. Um, I have work commitments overlapping with the exam period. Am I able to request different dates for exams? The short answer there would be no. Um, the the, the uh, work I, is not a, a, a grounds for a special consideration request during exam time. If you are sick, yes, that is a grounds for a special consideration, but not um, work commitments. Again, if you do have issues there, I would suggest that you go and talk to the course convener. All right, look, I'd like to thank everyone, Joanne, Debbie, Michelle, John, um, and I'd like to thank all of you for sitting here listening to us for the last hour. We do have refreshments just outside. Uh, we're all going to be there, so come over and say hello, and it'd be great to meet you. So thank you very much. Have a great day, and have a great time at UNSW.